But I think where the lawyers for the defendant in this case failed is they did not establish how, even if Fani and Mr. Wade had this um, relationship, how it impacted their legal rights. There was absolutely no discussion about that. It was, you know, uh, it was like a Trojan horse to send it in uh, for the affair, the illicit affair, but then nothing happened after that. They didn't lay any foundation for how their rights were impacted. And I think they, they had a missed opportunity to try to capitalize on that. And they kind of got caught up in all of the the tempestuous nature of the proceedings and the back and forth. And some things kind of just got lost in translation. So I don't see that the necessary legal elements were met in order to establish that she should be disqualified from the case. I, I'm like sitting here watching this, this, and I'm just completely baffled. I'm completely shocked. What you just saw was a clip from attorney Erica Wilson, who is a local attorney in the Atlanta area. Uh, and she was asked to be on uh, this local program, Atlanta uh, uh, Broadcasting uh, News Station. And you just heard what she said. She essentially said that the defense failed. And I am just kind of sharing this video because, you know, we still have no idea what's happening. Uh, Judge McAfee has not issued any ruling. The case is actually closed. But this is a national, publicized, televised uh, uh, news segment here. And this is an actual attorney. And she is literally saying that Fannie Willis should not get disqualified, that the defense did not prove any conflict of interest, and that there is no grounds for her dismissal. So we're going to watch this together. And I'm just like sitting here going, huh? Did you watch the same trial that we do? And I've got a lot of things to say about this attorney. I'm sure you do too in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you, Nez Nation. Um, but let's just watch this together. And then uh, I, I have a lot to say about this. Talk about just kind of the legal elements that would be met. Uh, I mean, I guess that's really what it comes down to. I mean, we've been talking a lot about the details of this alleged affair. And, well, I, I guess I should say admitted affair, but really what it comes down to is does it violate the law or not? So what it, what really does the law state with regards to, you know, relationships like this, impropriety? What does it take? Um, what, what does the judge need to find to actually remove her from the case? The judge needs to find that their legal rights were directly impacted or adversely impacted by this particular relationship. The mere fact that they may have engaged in an illicit affair, the mere fact that she may have allegedly hired him because he was her boyfriend or her paramour at the particular time does not in and of itself have any impact on this particular case, the way that they are prosecuting it and their legal rights. So what they would have needed to demonstrate is that somehow their relationship relationship impacted them adversely as far as their their legal rights were concerned and and that just was not necessarily you know established and there were a lot of missed opportunities for that but I don't think that they could have established that because I don't see how her personal relationship with someone on that particular case the, prosecuting the case would impact their legal rights now had she had an affair with a potential witness or law enforcement who was you know investigating the matter that that might be a little different but the person who is essentially aligned with her interests uh, which is prosecuting this matter they did not necessarily demonstrate that there was a conflict with that representation um okay so so that's really what it comes down to is there a conflict with that representation not just was there a relationship but also doesn't there have to be some financial gain well in terms of the financial gain sometimes financial gain can demonstrate um, of a conflict of interest. But again, even if there were, how does that impact their legal rights? How has that impacted Attorney uh, Willis's ability to prosecute this case? How does that impact Attorney Wade's ability to prosecute this case? How, did it directly impact them? Whether or not it absolutely impacts this case, it proves that they are liars. They lied under oath, they perjured themselves. It discredits their credibility. I mean, this doesn't make any sense at all. She keeps bringing this up and she brings it up over and over again, uh, uh, time and time again, saying that, oh, that's that's fine that they lied under oath. It's fine that they had a relationship. It's okay that they never mind the fact that they did all these violations. How did that affect 
the defendant's client's client's rights because the defendant's clients are deserve a fair and impartial trial. The attorneys who are representing the defendants have, this is called due process of law. And actually prosecutors, as the pit bull Sadow pointed out, prosecutors and DAs are held to a higher standard. Not only are they held to a higher standard, not only are they not supposed to perjure themselves, gain financially from some type of a work-related relationship or hiring, not only are they supposed to be honest and ethical and have the utmost integrity, but there isn't supposed to be even the mere appearance of impropriety. The church speech in and of itself completely violates the client's right to a fair and impartial trial because she went to a church in an area where there could be potential jurors selected from that gene that that uh, uh, community pool that pool of citizens in that fulton county and she's basically chastising the defendants and saying it's all about race and they're racist and they're coming after me because i'm black they're coming after nathan wade she is skewing that impartiality she is absolutely obstructing that impartiality the appearance of impropriety is profound but the actual impropriety usurps and trumps the actual appearance and she keeps saying this attorney keeps saying well they didn't do they failed they didn't do a good job of that they can have all these violations but how does that prove i mean it's not am i nuts let me know in the comments Let's let's hear some more from uh, this uh, attorney who I think might just be a. F I mean, I I have a lot to say about this. Let's just watch this. Holy macadamia nut! Are you kidding me right now? Come on. Or not, she paid for the trip to Fiji or wherever it was that they went. I can't necessarily remember and whether he paid and they paid him back. Um, I don't know that that necessarily has any bearing on their ability or impacted their discretion in prosecuting in this particular matter. So, and I, again, if it were the case, I believe that they would have been able so to. So, integrity and credibility and don't they matter? Focus primarily, really, on besmirching. Um, you know, District Attorney Willis's <coughs> reputation more well, yeah. so than they did focusing on how this impacted their clients. Who you are lives. represents how you can um, be impartial. Term, people have their various opinions, but in the letter of the law, is there a, a duty to disclose a relationship like this? And, and I believe that there is, it is written somewhere that she did have a duty to disclose. But okay. again, even if she had a duty to disclose and she failed to disclose, that doesn't necessarily have an impact on the defendant's legal rights. She can be um, reprimanded, um, if you will, for the lack of disclosure. It speaks but that to character, you include, Momo. Um, you know, such a severe sanction as to remove her from the case altogether. Okay, so I, there's not another impartial. view of rights. The issue is whether Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade lied under oath and are guilty of perjury. So is that really an issue? Could that become an issue here? Because, you know, obviously the disqualification hearings opened up a whole new can of worms. So I think what a lot of people need to understand is irrespective of whether or not the court's decision is nuanced, whether or not they find that there was a conflict of interest, whether or not they find that she failed to disclose, any of those things, all of those things are separate and apart from establishing whether or not there was a conflict of interest that directly impacted the defendant's legal rights. Mm -hmm. And so there are a plethora of reprimands or sanctions that they can receive from the courts. There are a plethora of reprimands and sanctions that they can receive. They're both attorneys from the Georgia Bar, but all of these things are separate and apart and not inexplicably, inextricably linked to the conflict of interest that the defendant's attorneys were trying to establish. She was also required under Georgia law to disclose to the county um, commission her intent to hire special pro prosecutors when she made her pre presentation on September 2021. Um, wh what's your response to that? Would that have any impact? I, you know, I hate to sound like a, you know, a broken record here, but again, not really. <laughs> it, 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 it really, it really won't necessarily not to say that she cannot be punished for that. And there's some sort of reprimand or sanction for that particular violation. But again, I think everybody needs to understand the call of the question is how, even if she did all of the things that she's being accused of, how did that impact the legal rights? And I don't even think anybody can directly relate the violations or the alleged violations to how it impacted their legal rights. They would have to demonstrate that. And they simply have not been able to do that. You're out of your freaking mind. I mean, you're literally out of your freaking mind, lady. I can't believe this woman calls herself an attorney. 
I, I'm just shot. I'm not even an attorney. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm somebody who has, you know, uh, I'm an author, uh, you know, I'm a professor. Uh, I'm a media personality for years. I've been in different industries related to media, communications, uh, coach, instructor, professor, rhetoric, principles of rhetoric, Aristotle, professor. I mean, I, I, I've never come across, I mean, every legal expert out there, every legal expert out there, I mean, there's probably a couple like this one, but they are so far and few in between have said that Fanny is sunk, that there's no way she... Uh, unless this judge is completely corrupt or is completely blind, there's no way she's not only getting disqualified, but should get and face serious charges. She keeps mentioning this thing about, well, how do you connect what Fannie Willis, all these violations, which she could be charged and they're not inextricably linked. How does that connect to violating the defendant's client's rights? Well, let's, let's kind of see here. So she's a liar. She committed perjury. Uh, she lied about the beginning of the relationship. She uh, hired somebody who was unqualified, uh, financially benefited by paying him an exorbitant salary, which is taxpayer funds, which in turn went on vacations where there's no receipts and everything is cash, which by the way, there was a filing by Fannie Willis where she wanted to introduce the evidence of some wine uh, sommelier or some wine business owner, but then she redacted that because she was like, oh my God, if I accept that, which somehow proves she paid cash for everything, then Schaefer and all this other testimony, Jaeger, et cetera, could come in. She knew that would burn her tush. Um, she did the speech itself. Never mind all of that. Never mind uh, uh, Terrence Bradley. Never mind uh, all of the lies, which yes, it besmirches her credibility and her, her character, which is a direct violation because prosecutors and DAs are held to a higher standard and they need to appear equivocal, neutral, impartial, fair, and she's anything but impartial. But the fact that she made this slanderous speech at a church, basically defaming all of the defendants, namely Donald Trump, to a pool of potential jurors. That in and of itself, she should be disbarred. Just that in and of itself. Never mind all the other lies. That directly is. It is extricably linked, Miss Wilson. I'm shocked you call yourself an attorney and can't see that. It is absolutely 100% linked to the violation of the defendant's client's rights because they don't have which every defendant has the right to, a fair and impartial trial. This is nuts. So I, I kind of hesitated earlier, but I honestly think, because I know Fannie Cash Money G. Willis, as she is like one of the most ruthless kingpins in the entire world. I mean, this girl goes back to the playbook of every dirty, crooked individual criminal you can actually muster. I think that Fanny hired her. I think Fanny is putting all these pawns and plants in place. Uh, I think Fanny, uh, you know, reached out to Senator Warlock, who um, went on national television recently and talked about how Trump. Yeah, it's 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 typical how they treat black women, right? I think this woman right here was hired. I think she's on the payroll of Fanny Willis. She was hired to go on this live uh, broadcast public televised local broadcast uh, which actually is global because it was on youtube and other platforms atlanta first she's a fanny plant she was paid if she's a real attorney she would absolutely see the validity of all of the defense's arguments she makes it makes it sound like the defense failed irrevocably and i just think that's absolute nonsense i throw this off to you what do you guys think what do you guys think of this attorney do you think she's right? Do you think she may have committed all these violations, but it's not directly linked to a conflict of interest? I mean, what? Um, do you think she's right when she says they didn't prove that any of these violations create a conflict of interest directly impinging upon the rights of these clients, of the defendants, which makes no sense at all? I think it absolutely did, especially the, ch uh, the church speech. I want to hear from you. What do you guys think? As always, members and super thanks get first priority, but I try with my whole soul best to respond to all the comments. If you made it this far, don't forget to become a Nez Nation insider. 
That's our free newsletter, so you don't ever miss out. You get all the top stories, breaking news, live updates, right to your inbox. Everything that legacy media, mainstream media won't talk about, but you know your boy Nez, yours truly, will right to your inbox. It's in the pinned comment. It's just a simple link, a simple sign up. Give us your best email. Bada boom, bada bing. You're in. It's free. So make sure you do that. Check out the videos I posted today and yesterday. They are absolutely fantastic. You're going to love these videos. Subscribe and follow down there. And as always, God bless you and your family and God bless America. I'll see you soon.